everybody, this is Leia, and in this video, we are going to be talking about choosing an Oracle card deck. When I first started feeling that I wanted to use Oracle cards, there were barely any on the market as compared to the choices we have today. There are so many. So I purchased the decks of authors I admired, the first ones being by Doreen Virtue, when she only had a handful of decks available, because she has, at this point, point while I'm recording this video, over 20 now, and Sonia Choquette. I learned with a passing of time, however, that you don't necessarily work well with a card deck just because you enjoy the author's other works, or their books. Or sometimes you will love some of the decks and author releases, but not others. There are a few reasons. One of them being, you don't just choose the cards, they choose you too. I've found that on the outside, I could like everything about a card deck. The artwork, the colors, the messages, and yet something was off. Like our energies weren't quite blending. So what I do in situations like that is put the cards away for a moment. And sometimes you'll find that years or months later, something's changed and you can actually work well with those Oracle cards now. On the other hand, I've come across card decks that, on the surface, didn't have what I'm consciously looking for. The artwork's not my preferred style, the colors don't do anything for my sense of aesthetics, and yet, wow. They give spot-on readings and feel so good to work with. If you've seen my review of Doreen Virtue's Archangel Oracle cards, you may have heard me mention that I found their energy to be a better and better match for mine with the passing of time. On the surface, the artwork isn't really what I personally find stunning, but it's just an example of a deck that shows me. So if you're new to Oracle cards and you haven't come across the Archangel Oracle yet, this is what it looks like. Here are just a few examples of cards from that deck. So I love the energy. It's awesome. And I learned that over time, but I am not really a fan of all the art. For instance, this. This kind of art, to me, that's just beautiful. I love a linear kind of art. But something that's fuzzier, like this one, it's not my personal preference. And there are a bunch of different artists here. Now that one I love. So I didn't really like every single illustration, but that's fine. This deck, like I said, chose me. And these three right here are just a few examples of Doreen's other decks. I already have a couple of reviews on her decks on this channel, so take a look at those if you're looking for a new one. Her decks are always really good for beginners. For the most part they are, you know, because I haven't worked with every single one of them, but from what I've seen, they're pretty good for beginners. And I will be doing more reviews too on her other decks just because I know that she is a very popular and beloved figure. A lot of people love her stuff and they want to find out before they buy something if it's worth working with. Now, outside of a deck calling out to you, regardless of surface appearances, you might want to take into consideration the theme of the deck. That's another thing to think about. What are you really into? Angels, fairies, mermaids, unicorns, vampires, goddesses or gods? Or maybe just general uplifting messages? Because some oracle card decks don't even really have much of a theme, they just have messages. Kind of like what you get out of a fortune cookie, but more um, uplifting. <laughs> I should say. If you find a theme you resonate with, that will at least ensure that you'll enjoy working with these cards based on that aspect. And if you plan to read for clients, consider also the size of the cards. That's another thing. What's comfortable for you to shuffle, for instance. A lot of oracle cards are considerably bigger than standard playing or even tarot cards, so if you have small hands, you may want to get comfortable with an alternate way of shuffling. That's a really small consideration though because I've found that if I really like a deck, 
even if there are some parts of it that I am not too keen on, I will work with it. I will make it work. And I am willing to wager that you will too. Sometimes too, the card decks you use in readings for yourself differ from those you feel are all right to be used with others. Are you or your querents fine with there being nudity, for instance? And as I have mentioned earlier, it helps if the artwork and the colors appeal to you. At least for starters, because you could stumble upon some decks later that you just love, regardless. Sometimes you'll know immediately if you and a deck are going to get along when you look at reviews and pictures online. So yeah, go ahead and do that. Look online first, read blog posts, watch YouTube videos. That's one way for you to scope out what's there. But other times you'll be pleasantly surprised that what you thought when you were window shopping online is not the case at all once you meet the deck in person. And the reverse is true also. Sometimes you think that a deck is going to be really, really, really good, but, and I guess that's logically speaking because it has all these factors that you think would make it ideal for you, but then you meet it finally in person. Like the delivery person comes to the door and you open the box and there's just no chemistry there. <laughs> You know, because I love Archangel Michael, I thought for sure that I would enjoy Doreen Virtue's Archangel Michael Oracle cards. So I tried to love those cards. I worked with them, yet sadly, I wasn't absolutely in love with the deck and I ended up trading it for the Angel Therapy one. Right here. Which I'm glad to say I do love. That's another one of those decks that I just love the energy of. Even if I am not too sold on all the art on the cards, I do like it. And so, those are just a few things to think about off of the top of my head. I could make other videos in the future along these same lines, and I'm sure that they're going to be helpful for people who are just beginning their card reading journey now, or their spiritual journey, since to me, these aren't two different things. I read cards, I look at the messages on the cards and do that for clients as part of my spiritual practice. It's not just a novelty or something that I'm doing for fun. And I know that different people have different approaches, but if you resonate with my approach, then well, it's nice to meet a kindred spirit. So those considerations are pretty loose because the process, I would say, is trial and error over time for you to discover what truly works for you. And I just wanted to share some points that I've come across on my personal journey in case any of it makes sense to you. So that's it for this video. I'll be back really soon. Good night from my corner of the world. Good morning to you if it's morning when you see this or afternoon and I guess I'm just a little hyper right now <laughs> and you can probably tell too if you've seen my other videos but anyway I will see you again soon bye for now namaste mm -hmm.